Hopefully everyone can hear me. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us for tonight's Cinematic Arts Residency Info Session. Um, if you don't already know me, my name is Danielle Bender, and I'm the Cinematic Arts Manager at Oolite Arts. Uh, I'm going to take a quick moment to do a land acknowledgement. Uh, Oolite Art acknowledges the Seminole and Miccosukee peoples as the current and ancestral keepers of the land we work on and their connection to land and community. We pay our respect to the Miccosukee and Seminole tribes and to the elders, both past and present, including the Tequesta and, and Calusa tribes. Um, so thank you again for joining us tonight and welcome to the info session one for our 2022 Cinematic Arts Residency application. Um, this is officially our fourth year of offering the residency. So tonight I'll go a little bit over the ins and outs of the application process. Uh, and at the end of the session, I'll be chatting with one of our 2020 residents, Farron Humes. So I'm sure that you all have a lot of questions for me and a lot of questions for Farron. So please make sure that you drop those in the Q&A feature, not in the chat. It's easier for them to all be in one spot, uh, but I will hop right into it. The most important thing, by the way, that you'll see on this slide is that applications are due on October 1st. So that's the last day to submit your application. Okay, so what is the Cinematic Arts Residency um, and why are we offering it? We already know a lot about Miami-Dade filmmakers and how they've had great success with short films, whether docs or narratives. Um, they've gone on to screen at Sundance, Toronto, South by Southwest, Berlin Ale. Um, and our community is also making a lot of really great feature documentaries. Shout out to Kareem and obviously my boss, Dennis. Uh, but we weren't really making a lot of narrative features in Miami. So Ulaid asked ourselves, how can we get filmmakers to their next step in their career, uh, which would be to create their first feature film. And that's essentially how the Cinematic Arts Residency was born. Um, since the program started, we've brought on five filmmakers as Cinematic Arts residents. Uh, this spring, one of our residents, Edson Jean, sorry if you hear noises behind me, my dogs, chose this one moment to decide to start playing. Um, <laughs> uh, so Edson Jean premiered his first feature narrative, Ludi, at Miami Film Festival this spring, and then again at South by Southwest. Uh, all of the different residents are in different stages of production, and I'm pretty excited to bring Farron on in a little to share some of her insights and experiences. Again, questions for her, put them in the Q&A feature. Um, so, of course, making your first micro budget feature isn't a walk in the park. So, Oolite is committed to supporting your process and giving you a ton of tools to succeed. So, once awarded, your, you as a resident would receive up to $50,000 for the creation of your narrative micro budget feature. Uh, you also receive a shared space in our building with the existing cinematic arts residents, and we help fund a producer for your project in addition to the $50,000. So you also have access to all of our equipment to check out. So that includes cameras, lighting, sound equipment, all of it. Uh, we also just recently, actually this week, purchased a pretty amazing editing dock and workspace for the program. So that's available for your use as well. Um, doggies. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Um, you'll, you'll get a 24 seven access to Ulite's facilities and access to our staff. So staff access is not 24 seven, um, but I'd like to think I'm pretty readily available to all my cinematic arts residents. So, uh, there's that as well, but beyond me, there's our CEO and president Dennis Scholl, our VP Esther Parks, and one of my colleagues, Juan Matos, who works pretty extensively with the cinematic arts press, uh, program. But uh, beyond that, you also have access to our international network of film partners and, uh, you know, we're going to work really hard to make sure that you have a Miami premiere as well. So, you know, like I just said, we we're committed for the film to have screen time in Miami. So when the time's right, we'll arrange a one week theatrical run at O Cinema. Um, so when you think about this residency, the idea is that you should be able to conceptualize your film create your film and premiere your film all in Miami. So totally homegrown effort. Um, in terms of eligibility, the rules are pretty simple. You have to be over the age of 18, full-time Miami-Dade resident, and you have to have completed a narrative short in a key creative role. So that could be director, 
producer, writer, or editor. Um, you could also have had a key creative role in a feature as long as it's not a director. So this must be your first time doing a feature narrative as a director. Uh, other thing you should think about is what you'll spend your time doing in the residency. So we want you to be able to take some time for development, but the main thing that you should center your residency around is production, post, and festival strategy. Um, and I keep saying the word micro budget over and over and over. This month, all of the programming that I've set up is set to help you navigate the residency application with a clear understanding of what micro budget filmmaking is. Um, obviously, today we'll get a chance to chat with Farron and see what she's up to on her film. But on September 8th, we'll also be screening Strawberry Mansion. It's essentially a $20 million concept, but shot all on a micro budget. So I believe it's under $50,000 as well. Um, I got a chance to watch it at Virtual Sundance, uh, and it was pretty, pretty interesting. It's the epitome of endless micro budget possibilities. So it's really, really uh, inspiring if you're making your first micro budget or thinking about getting in that mindset. Um, after that screening on September 8th, I'm going to be chatting with the directors. They have tons to share about shooting your feature film on a micro budget. And one of the two directors runs a streaming platform for micro budget films called No Budge. Uh, so please tune in for a lot of his insights. I'm going to put the link in the chat for y'all to register if you want to sign up for that. So that's Strawberry Mansion. Um, I'm also going to be offering virtual office hours this entire month for those that maybe need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time or you want to ask questions that you didn't feel comfortable asking here. Um, that's going to be every Tuesday in September. So link is also in the chat. And you're also free to email me if you have any other questions or can't make it to any of those times. Um, last but not least, we're going to be doing one more info session on September 29th. I'm going to be covering the same things I'm covering today. So if you uh, feel like you want different insights, the, the info part will be the same. However, I'm going to be bringing on 2021 Cinematic Arts resident Hansel Boras Garcia, who's going to be sharing a little bit more about where he's at and what it's been like working on his micro budget feature. So I will put the link in the chat right there so that you can sign up for that one as well. Let me go to the next slide. So application, you're pretty much looking at the application. Um, you're going to want to provide a log line, so it'll be one to two sentence description of your story. Uh, for the synopsis, give us a brief summary of your film's plot. We also want you to tell us your artistic statement specific to this film. So what's your creative vision? What will it look and feel like? Um, there's also a question that asks how you'll complete the film with the resources provided. So again, I keep repeating micro budget over and over and over and over. But we really want you to understand that the resident chosen receives $50,000 to make their film. It's not partial funding, that's the full budget. So we want to know how you're going to make the film with that budget and to tell us how you're going to make the film in a way that honors your vision. Uh, and then you'd also outline your production timeline. And then we ask a question about how your film embraces micro budget filmmaking. Again, we don't want you to make an underfunded indie film. Uh, and stress out about it every step of the process. Talk a little bit about how your film is going to embrace the concepts of micro budget filmmaking. And then the last step is you're going to provide three things that will help our jurors get to know you. I'll tell you a little bit more about the jury in a sec, but your bio, your CV, and the work sample. Work samples can be up to 20 minutes in length total. Uh, if you submit a 40 minute long uh, work sample, the jurors are only going to watch the first 20 minutes. If you submit five different short films and they are 10 minutes each, they're only going to watch 20 minutes worth. So however they choose to watch that. Um, and just keep in mind that the jury is completely independent. Uh, so let them get to know who you are as a person and as a filmmaker. They might not be familiar with your specific work. So let me go over to the next slide. And again, I see a couple of questions going in our Q&A. So please feel free to drop them in if you have any questions that I'm not covering. A um, couple tips on applying. You know what the application obviously looks like and, and it's online as well and submittable. 
Um, but when crafting your application, we're really looking for someone that's ready to get going on their film. So as mentioned before, you should have experience working on short films. This should not be your first time at the rodeo. Uh, specifically, you should have experience in a key creative role, which is director, producer, editor, or writer. Um, but mainly we wanna make sure you're ready to hit the ground running and get going on your film. Uh, we're looking for films that are connected to the community. This film is meant to be shot in Miami. So if you're not looking to fund something or uh, film something filmed in another state, uh, it, it's you have to be a Miami-based filmmaker and your film has to be set in Miami. Can't be in California, can't be in New York, can't be in Texas. Um, it might not be the opportunity for you if you are trying to shoot it somewhere else. Community is really important to us. And this should be something that resonates with South Florida audiences, regardless of genre. Um, and importantly, we're looking for filmmakers who can write and direct to the budget without sacrificing the creativity or quality of their film. So you don't need to have a red camera to shoot your film. If the idea is compelling and you're passionate about the story, you could shoot it on anything. So that's kind of the ethos that we want to emphasize. Go to the next slide. So your timeline is pretty simple. Applications already opened up this week. They opened August 30th, and we're going to keep them open until October 1st at 6 p.m. And then we'll announce the winner in late November. So I said winner because we are only going to be selecting one cinematic arts resident. Then between October 1st and early November, we'll have that independent jury of experienced filmmakers, and they're going to select the 2022 cinematic arts resident. Uh, I know a lot of people always have questions about the jurors. No, we cannot share who they are until after the fact. Um, the jurors do read every single application in its entirety, and they're going to review all the materials you upload up to the 20 minute mark. Um, so your, your, uh, your sample work only up to 20 minutes. And then, you know, just general grant writing rule of thumb, your application is going to be the sum of all its parts. So review everything you've written before clicking submit and make sure it feels cohesive. Obviously, um, if you submit something and you need to add something to your application, uh, as long as it's before the deadline, you can always email me and I can open it back up for editing. Um, but as long as it's before October 1st. And uh, we always get the question if anyone from ULIT gets to select the Cinematic Arts resident, and the answer is no, not me, not Dennis, not Esther, no one on our team decides the Cinematic Arts resident, it's solely the decision of independent jurors. So if you're selected, your residency period starts January 2022, and then it ends January 2023. So you have the possibility of extending it into a second full year if you need it. Um, I am going to pop over to a couple of questions before I invite Farron on. Um, I'm going to leave one of these questions for Farron. Do we need a completed feature film script for the application or is writing the screenplay a part of the residency? Um, there's not a set formula you have to follow. You do not have to have a completed feature film script. Um, different applicants come in at different uh, stages of their project. So you do not have to have a completed screenplay, just a really good idea of what you're, what you're hoping to accomplish. Um, so I'm going to answer that done. Uh, if you're working on a screenplay with a co-writer, can that film be submitted? Yes. Uh, the film can be submitted with a co-writer. However, only one person is awarded the cinematic arts residency. So there can only be one director. So if you and your person are co-writing it, um, only one person receives the Cinematic Arts Residency and only one person can be credited as the director. We answered that. When does the residency actually start? Um, so I just covered that one. It starts January, 2022. So we would reach out to the person that gets selected in late November, early December. Um, get you onboarded and, and in our system, and then you would start your residency period in January. Hopefully that answers your question. Are we limited to the micro budget or can we source additional funding? Um, additional funding cannot be sourced. It's a micro budget feature film. Um, I like to kind of relate it to the idea of uh, 
wrestling weight, uh, weight, what's the word? Wrestling weight divisions, right? Um, there's different types of filmmaking processes. There's indie, and then below that is micro budget. Micro budget is that you only have $50,000 to complete this film. So that should include everything. Now, keep in mind, I'm, I might have mentioned it above, but we do also provide funding to go towards your producer. So the $50,000 does not include your producer. Um, and we also provide the funding to make sure that you get your week-long screening at O Cinema. So that would not come out of your budget either. So I'm gonna mark that as red. Would trailers be of more interest for work samples or is it of more interest to show scenes from each film completed? Um, you won't like my answer, but I can't really answer that because it's up to the jurors. Um, if it was me, uh, it might be a different answer, but all the jurors have individual preferences. So I think that your best bet is to show your strongest work. If that's in a trailer, that's great. Otherwise, um, your, your, your best bet is to submit what you feel strongest about. And then I have one more. I think Farron already joined me. When does the residency end and does the film need to have a final edit by then? Uh, residency is supposed to last for a year. However, if you need an extension, we're always happy to grant that. That's totally fine. Um, does the film need to be to have a final edit by then? Uh, it's something that we work really closely hand in hand in. Um, it, it's all going to depend on your individual process. It's not rigid. It's not as rigid as um, ending within a year. So I have one more that I'm gonna answer and then I'm gonna go over some stuff with Farron. Um, somebody asked, how important it is, is it to have a Miami theme in the selection process? Uh, it is not. Uh, we want you to make a film that is your film. We'd obviously like for it to relate to Miami audiences. Um, and that's part of the reason why I mentioned it should, or it has to be filmed in Miami, but it does not need to be a Miami themed film. Um, so I'm going to keep on answering questions along the way, but I, I have Farron here, so I am going to pop right into it. Let's go right to it. So welcome, Farron, our 2020 Cinematic Arts resident. Can you hear me? I think you're on mute. Me? Yes, I can. Hi, Hi I'm here. Farron is looking very well rested and in the outdoors, looking good. Um, happy to have her on today. And we're gonna just talk a little bit about her process in the residency and what it was like applying. So, um, you know, obviously people get the announcement once we select our cinematic arts residents, but maybe don't know much about their process. So maybe for our audience sake, what's your background in filmmaking? Um... I am a filmmaker from Miami. I went to undergrad at University of Florida and I studied um, production there. And then I went to film school at Florida State University. And then after that, their film school. Um, uh, then after that, I moved around from New York, Baltimore, finally landed in Miami. Um, and since 2015, I've been making films about Florida um black communities all over florida northern florida where um, my mother's family is from but also miami now um when i came back in 2014 2015 i worked on moonlight as a location manager and met a whole group of friends that um we love each other and we so support each other's projects and you know we, we have this ecosystem here in miami um and, and um, in 2018, I made a short film in Liberty Square called Liberty. Um, and I felt the need to, to do more. Um, to, there's, there's more to be told with that, more to be explored. Um, and it's an ongoing story in terms of displacement. So um, I applied for the Cinematic Arts Residency and at the end of 2019, became a resident 2020 um to to help tell that story a little more um and 
tell the individual and collective stories of the residents and what displacement looks like in Liberty Square from a more um, 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 like, um, what do you, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, it's doc and narrative, um, just a little more, um, yeah, non-fictional and investigative approach. To yeah. It. So, so it's interesting that you bring that up because that's always one of the questions that we get are, are people allowed to do documentaries or are they allowed to do hybrid films? And, you know, one of the main things that we want to think about or we want the applicant to think about is can your film fall into a hybrid format or can it fall into a narrative format if you can convince the jury on that? Sure, go right ahead. We had a film that um, we screened in January called Bloody Nose Empty Pockets, which is a hybrid film, um, which I encourage everyone to check out. It's also a micro budget film. Uh, as long as it can fit within those restraints, it, you're good to go. And obviously the jury felt that yours could do that. Um, you know, you're talking a little bit about what led you up to that point, but what were, what made you want to apply? What made you know you were ready to apply for the residency? Um, it was really, it was really Oolite. So, you know, I have a couple of friends and filmmakers who, um, Monica, Monica Sorrell had gone through the program the year prior or you know, was a resident the year prior. Um, I was interested in sort of getting connected and immersing myself more into the art world. Um, and I wanted to be in an environment where, um, yeah, because all of my background is is just film and mostly narrative film. So I was um, I was interested in um, being in an atmosphere and environment with the other residents of Oolight as a whole, um, and that has happened. Just being in um, in the building with the programs, just meeting the other residents and having just sort of like cross or interdisciplinary conversations, um, making plans of working or connecting with each other. It's been, that's been enriching. And that was, that was really my drive, just sort of being able to meet um, and immerse myself in a world that I wasn't a part of before. Yeah, I think, I think funding is always very important, but community uh, to me is, is, really like at the top of the list of things that you want to get out of a residency. So good mm -hmm. to point that out. But um, when when you were applying, maybe take people through that process. What did it look for you? Because I, I think people are really genuinely afraid of applications applying and putting their creative work out there. So what, what did that feel like applying the process? Um. You know, I was I was trying to think about the application and what it asked. I remember providing a treatment, um, and I really wanted to to express myself in a way that was just like as and to express the project in the most concentrated um, um, and heartfelt ways to get to the core of um, of why I was doing the project and why it was important. Um, and why it was important to do it now. Um, so taking into consideration Liberty Square and um, the timeline, the fact that the construction was sort of um, speeding up. Um, um, so like just getting grounded in what the, the core matters of the project were, um, the core matters of myself and, and um, in my career, my trajectory, how all those things align. Um, that's that was sort of like my my mapping out of the application process. So the treatment, um, um, yeah, I think I, I gave a, a a projection of when I thought that I would be filming, um, who were my key players, who I thought my team would be. Um, the fact that I, I had done this before and worked in the same community, there are a lot of con um, established connections and relationships. I, I, I focused on um, communicating that this is a project that was going to happen either way and, and sort of like providing the nuts and bolts of, of why that was. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think, um, you know, I did get one question from the audience that I was planning on asking you anyways. 
uh, they said, are there any types of projects or aesthetics that the residency prefers over others? When you submitted, did you think we were looking for a specific type of film or? No, I don't, I, I, I did not think about that. Um, but, you know, just given that we like there's you, the organization is, it's an art organization. It, it's so varied in terms of all of the artists and fellows that are part of it. So um, that was my assumption that there was really no criteria in terms of like the genre or the type of film that I was going to be making. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's on point to, to, you know, further answer that question. No, it does not. There's not a certain type of film that we're looking for as long as it falls within micro budget. Um, we're just looking for the strongest work. So uh, submit a proposal that feels like your strongest work and you can submit more than one or two applications, but we recommend keeping it at three or under because at that point, uh, it might not be as concentrated as you'd like it to be. Um, speaking of, so obviously I've seen Liberty. Uh, we worked on a event together when I was at the Wolfsonian where we got to screen it alongside Katja's film as well. And uh, it's a beautiful film. Is there is there a place that people can watch it right now or? You yeah, you can, um, you can, it's on Vimeo. So if you just do a web search for Liberty, Darren Humes, it'll come up. Okay, cool. So I, I'm assuming, because I actually, I was not uh, around at Ulite when you submitted, but did you submit a work sample? And if so, what did it look like? Was that Liberty? I think I did. I think, yeah, I submitted Liberty um, as a, as a, um, a tonal piece and a reference piece to, to what I've done before, what I'm capable to doing. Yeah. Okay, this is a tricky question. No one likes to answer this question, but I'm gonna ask it anyways. Okay. If you had to guess, why did you, why did your application win? Um, I think, yeah, it would be good to know who the judges were. I think, oh, oh yeah, 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 I remember um, Chanel, Chanel Aponte Pearson and other folks. Um, I believe it's it's probably like a mix of um, or a track record. So a track record of either um, garnered recognition or awards. The fact that I've done um, films myself in the position that I was applying for, um, and that I was like fully cemented and rooted here in Miami with like an established filmmaking. Um, um, slate. I personally love a good comeback story of people coming back to Miami and, you know, setting roots here. So I'm super into that. But, yeah, uh, intentionally. So yeah, like, I think that's a part of it, too. I, I believe like it's, we, there's something about Miami, we're, we're vested in people who are invested in Miami. I think everyone feels that way. But like, um, we are about people who, who really love this place and, and have a vision for this place. So um, maybe perhaps the, the jurors saw some of that too. I think so. Um, are you planning on continuing to make micro budget feature films or is this like a, obviously everyone hopes to, for their next feature to have a bigger budget, but is this something that you like the practice of working within restraints or? Yeah. Be honest, it's okay. <laughs> no, it is. Um, I that's actually not a goal of mine to 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 scale up or to um, have a big budget for me. Um, and what my goal is usually, which is time or duration, intimacy, um, connectedness. A lot of how I've been able to execute that. Um, and my mode of executing that is to scale down. Um, and a lot of times I, I don't need um, a lot of money for that. So I don't really think about the budget um, because I always, I, I, know how to, I know how to make a film with zero dollars and not, not in a, an unethical way. Um, yeah. 
Um, so will I continue? It, it, it's very, it's dependent. It's it's subject dependent. It's, in, it's environment dependent. A lot of the um, folks or communities that I'm working with, like um, to scale up, it really just isn't, it just isn't congruent with, with some of the goals or initiatives that I have, unless it becomes like a seeding project to go back into the community. Um, well, speaking of our, like, where are you in the process in general on your film? Um, so for people that are curious about where your project's at. So for the last year and a half, I, so again, this is, um, this is all, everything film, a hybrid, some, some docs, some, um, some archival, some narrative portions. The last year and a half, I've been mostly interviewing residents. Um, yeah, I don't know if you, I guess I should give it like a little synopsis of the film. Um, but So this film is um, taking a look at all of the, any, any shared offerings of residents of um, their desires, their future projections of what their community looks like. Some of them are sharing their dreams. Some are sharing memories and past reflections. Um, um, so I've been asking and engaging the residents um, and tracking their their moves from old Liberty Square to new Liberty Square, as, as well as residents who um, are still in old Liberty Square, and then the residents who have, have left um, Liberty Square altogether. Mm -hmm. um, so the last year and a half has been mostly that, doing interviews with some um, narrative threads, um, um, Terrence and I, the cinematographer, have gone out and gotten um, a lot of ex um, exterior shots, just like landscapes. Um, trying, I've been trying to um, pull visual threads of images or like reoccurring patterns in motion or architectural structures and seeing how or what stories um, start to populate that way just by what naturally reoccurs if we keep going out um, and filming what is what is out and about. Um, and now we're moving towards um, a narrative thread that has been sort of like um, reoccurring themes that have come up in these interviews from residents and I've been trying to um, pull and piece that together to make uh, a story that sort of weaves in and out of the interviews um, that's in conversation with the archival footage and the landscape shots that we've gotten. Um, so yeah, moving more into the um, narrative editorial side of it. Um, the first half was very heavy in sort of the receiving, the ingest phase, just listening to see um, what, what wanted to be shared by the residents. Got it. And you know, you're, you're sharing so much about the process, but like, what would you say now that you're, I wouldn't say you're on the tail end. It's hard to know what, what point you're at because you, you work so different. Um, I, I love your process. It's so thoughtful, but what, what would you say has been the most fulfilling part of this process and what has been your challenge? I think the challenge and the gift I'm starting to see is just like the, um, playing with like these new approaches um, and the uncertainty of it. I started that with Liberty, just like, you know, writing a script and then abandoning the script and doing everything improvisational. Um, and it was so rewarding to just like step out on the limb and experiment with that. Um, but that is, that is the scariest thing, um, like the uncertainty of of, of doing and, uh, and this project sort of unfolding by, by need, basically. So um, we started with the interviews first at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, one, to be safe um, and, and, and do what was most immediate because the construction was still ongoing. Um, and, and so just a little aside, the film is very adaptive just to, to, to sort of like render the sense of intimacy, like you have to be adaptive and agile and open to the residents 
um, schedules and their yeah. needs. So that, that's that was a, a similar word I was going to come up with is I was going to say your your process and this film seem really malleable. Mm -hmm. um, that's, a, that's the main thing I think of when I think about your process. Intentionally so. Um, yeah, it's like the end goal is to be sort of like a, a refraction of what the community is. And in order to do that, I, it, I want to be malleable to what um, what is needed from the community. So. Um, so that's the challenge, the uncertainty, the, what was the question? That, what's the difference? Between the, it would be your challenges and also the things that have been maybe more fulfilling. So we, we already got over the challenge, but what's, what are the things that you, that have helped enlighten your practice or have helped, you know, just add to it in general? Um, You're in the pit of it, so it's hard. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like, I'm, I, I think I'm getting tripped up on the most rewarding. So let me just like, just like reel off the rewarding things. The rewarding things are um, being in constant dialogue with the other fellows. Um, that's very enriching. And um, us talking about each other's projects, giving insight, um, um, being able to work with Terrence and sort of like develop a relationship, a visual relationship and, and capturing dynamic that's really free. Um, and for, for audience members that don't know who you're referring to, do you want to um, share? Terrence, yes, Terrence Price is um, the cinematographer for the film. Um, he also was first AC on Liberty and um, we also worked together. He was a DP on T, Keisha Ray Witherspoon's film. Um, and he's an amazing photographer. So, um, so that's, been, that's been rewarding, just getting, getting to work with friends um, and experiment. And he's always down for whatever. Um, the other rewarding thing is, um, is doing, is finding, using this film to experiment and find the way to use cinema as a um, the most yeah the most rewarding thing about this film has been my wanting to find ways to move to find a way to make cinema not extractive it is like inherently extractive um, and all this project has been is me um, finding the modes of capturing um, and engaging with subjects and communities um, that are really of benefit to them. Um, and truly collaborative. And truly collaborative, exactly. Um, that has been the most rewarding. Love that. Well, I, I know we're running out of time, so I'm gonna ask one more question before I let you go enjoy the great outdoors, but uh, what advice would you give to anyone that's on the fence about applying that isn't sure if they're ready or? Oh, no, no, no. apply. Why not apply? Um, one thing, applications, they, they help you generate more information about your project in the first place. They, they're, they're great questions for you to start figuring out why this is important, why you need to tell this story, why is it interesting, will it be interesting to someone? Um, the jurors are like your first audience, um, so it could be indicative of what your broader audience might, how, how they might respond to the project. So it's like there's, there's no loose scenario in you, and the application is free, right? And it's just your treatment. Um, yeah, so if you truly, if you, we care about our projects. We want to develop them more. This is this is an opportunity to sit down and think about your project um, fully and how it how it presents itself and may be perceived by others, which is essentially what we do as filmmakers anyway. Um, and it's a very quick and seamless process. So yeah, 
I don't, I, I don't find this application to be, I mean, I'm not a filmmaker, but I don't find this application to be too um, intense. So hopefully people submit their ideas. And like Farron said, it's a, it's almost like a, your initial incubator period of, of your script and, and getting the project, getting it going. So um, Farron, I'm going to let you go while I answer questions that are more related to the residency versus you know your process but thanks for taking time out to talk with me and always lovely to chat for a bit okay sounds good thank you i'll Enjoy. talk to you later bye 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 everyone All the um, everyone else should stay on but i'm just letting farron go enjoy herself <laughs> um so let me just really quick go through the rest of our slides we're almost done here um and I, I know there's a couple of questions, so I'm gonna try and answer those as well. Um, I have one that says, when budgeting on average, how much are grantees awarding themselves as payment? Um, I can't really say that because everyone has a, a we, we don't require people to submit a budget. You don't have to do that. Um, you're, you're obviously supposed to be talking about how you're gonna work within a micro budget, but it's not asking for a line by line breakdown. Um, so it's figuring out how much you can pay yourself with the proposal that you have, um, that you've submitted. Does the film need to be in English? No, it does not. Um, as you will find on our September 29th info session with Hansel Porras Garcia, that uh, film that Hansel is doing is entirely in Spanish. So it does not have to be in English. Next question is, do you have to be a filmmaker to apply? Can writers or actors apply? You have to have um, participated in a short film in a key creative role. So again, that could be a director, producer, writer, um, cinematographer, but actors, it, you, you have to have experience with one of the ones that I just said. It, you can't apply if you only have experience acting. Um, what if you don't have any film work samples and only have a script? Can you still apply? Absolutely. You should submit your script. Um, several people do do that. So that can totally work. Um, I think that's it for questions. Uh, I'll stay on for another minute or two, but just as a reminder, October 1st is the big day. Get your applications in by then. I'm going to quickly put the link to the application in the chat. You can find that on our website. Um, and then as a close up shop uh, slide, we're just going to remind you that we're going to be screening the micro budget film Strawberry Mansion. That's in collaboration with O Cinema, and you can sign up for that at, let me get the link to put in the bio or to put in the chat. Here we go. Um, so you can register for that with the link that's in the chat. Um, and I'm, again, I'm going to be talking with the two directors who are very experienced with making micro budget films. Um, I'm also going to be doing office hours every Tuesday in September. So please feel free to sign up for one of those slots. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. If you were shy and didn't want to submit your question here, I'm happy to do it one on one. And obviously, I also like to meet everyone. So um, that's basically it. Thanks all uh, for attending and best of luck on your applications. Look forward to seeing you on September 8th and also September 29th. So have a great night. <laughs>